Welcome back here. We are here on the main stage, Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora here every single month with Liverpool Athletics, whatever sport it may be, as well as our leadership group that we have. It, we're always happy to be here at Home Team Pub. We do the Liverpool Athletics Wake Up Call exclusive show right here at Home Team Pub and only here at Home Team, 7990 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York, right down the road from Liverpool High School. And we're back here with Coach Dave Mancuso of the football team. This is the Liverpool football preview as we're getting started very, very soon. Right parallel, right up there with Syracuse football and collegiate football as well. And then on my other side, I have Bryce Mills, a fellow middle linebacker. So Bryce said he's done this for fighting before, but he's never done this football-wise. Bryce, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. How you doing? Doing good. Jake said some nice things about you? He did. I was surprised. It was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. No, Jake's the best. So, tell me something good about Jake. You got to return the favor here. Uh, man, I'd say Jake's really the hardest working kid I've ever played around. And uh, the great thing about Jake is he's not selfish at all. And if he's working, he wants everybody around him to work too. So he wants everybody to be great. Those were. Some very fine words. So either he owes you money or dinner or something. <laughs> Make some salt and pepper wings tonight. Maybe. What's Maybe. it like to play alongside him? Uh, it's it's great. I've had the pleasure to do it for. This will be my third year now, and uh, every year it's just been it's been great. He's like a brother to me on and off the field. So it's awesome. Being in the middle of the defense, that that middle linebacker position is sometimes called the quarterback of the defense. Mm -hmm. You share that role with Jake. Mm -hmm. What's that life been like sharing that? Do you guys? give and take pretty well? Did you have to kind of learn to have a unified voice? How'd it come about? Uh, I'd say for the most part for me, it, it would definitely be a learning curve just because I'm not, I'm not very vocal and I'm sure coach can say that, but I like to lead by example. Yeah. So for me, it's a learning curve, but I feel like I'm getting a hold of it a little bit and uh, with time, it comes along. So, so you lead by example. So is Jake the loud one? Yeah, yeah. No, he needs a bad example, too. But Definitely. Probably Definitely talks more the than loud me. One. <laughs> Fair enough. Coach, tell me something about Bryce Mills. Tell me, tell me why he's a captain. Tell me why he's up here on the stage. You know, he, like he said, he leads by example. You know, usually when kids are pretty good, they lead with their mouth, you know, and he doesn't do that. He, he's very humble, and he, gives, he works just as hard as Jacob does uh, on the football field, but... You know, like, his celebrations are minimal. Like, you know, like, it's, it's just he's always back to work, back to business. You know, he's a, I don't know if you know, but he's a, a, a phenomenal boxer. He just recently turned pro. And, you know, most kids who are boxers who turn pro might not play football. Or they might have 80 T-shirts about how great of a boxer he is. He never even talks about it unless we bring it up to him. And, uh, you know, he just works really hard. And I think, you know, it's that intrinsic motivation he doesn't need it from the people around him. He just loves to play football, and he loves and, and he loves playing with his friends. Bryce, that humble nature, where did that come from? Uh, I've just been raised that way, honestly. Definitely came from my parents, my family, and the people I've been around, too. So it uh, wasn't, wasn't all me. <laughs> Definitely say that, because I was always raised with a great family, uh, selfless, uh, always giving anything they have to everyone. So it's definitely came from them. Being a boxer and turning pro, you're a teenager. I mean, what's, what's that life like to be considered a professional in that field at this time? Oh, that's great, too. It's just I've done it since I was a little kid, so it's like another. It's basically it's my life. It's all I know, really. So it's it's football and then it's it's fighting. So I I do both and I love them both. What made you want to get into boxing? Like you said, you've been doing it since you were little. What was it that brought you to it? Uh, I used to be in martial arts when I was a little kid. So from the age of like five to I'd say eleven, I was doing karate, martial arts background, and then I kind of I wouldn't say I got bored of it, but I wanted to try something new. So I did I picked up fighting. And for you, what's the art of it? You know, there's, there's something special to it that only people who are in it can talk about. Go a little bit deeper into it because it, it's so much more than what we see, and there's so much work that goes into it. Uh, just the aspects, the aspects of the sport, really, honestly. It's like self-discipline, integrity. It teaches you a whole bunch of 
lessons that you can't just use in fighting, but in life too. So uh, that's been great for me. It's been a base since I was a little kid. So it's helped me out a lot. Normally, you take your aggression and your frustration and the things that are bothering you and take it out on the football field. You get to be a boxer and be on the football field. Yeah. So how calm are you in normal life? I really, uh, I wouldn't say I'm that calm, honestly. Like, okay. I'm just like another kid. When a test comes up, I get nervous, just like anybody else would. Or uh, a tough situation, obviously. I'm not, not that calm. But in the, on the football field, I'd say I definitely have the most aggression. Like in the rain, I have aggression, but... I can moderate it a little bit, but on the football field, I'm like, go, 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 24-7. So. Why are there, Coach talked about, you don't celebrate. You do something good, you go back to your post. Mm -hmm. Why? <clears throat> I think that's just how it should be, really. Just, there's no need to really rub it in anyone's face. I mean, it's, everybody's trying to go out and do their best, so what's the point of celebrating? It doesn't up the scoreboard, so that's, that's it, really. So I guess you're not an Antonio Brown fan. No, I'm not. <laughs> Fair enough. Coach, yeah. to look at that linebacker core, we've talked about it a little bit here today. When you have two in the middle working off each other, just what you can say about what you see through your vantage point of Bryce and Jake together. Yeah, You know, they complement each other. You know, today I was watching, we were in interior run, and uh, watching, you know, Bryce Blitz and Vaco stepping over the top and, and vice versa. It's like, you know, they've been playing so long together. They know what each other's doing. You know, they're like synchronized. And, uh, you know, you, when you have two kids that are that much in tune with each other, you know, that make, you know, we don't always make the right calls, but they can make them right because they're great athletes. And to speak on that, how often do you see them ad lib? If, if they see something on the field, maybe you called something, maybe you're asking for something, the, the, the plan gets botched, something happens. Yeah. How do you see them ad lib? Well, they're great athletes. You know, they, they ad lib with their bodies and their, and their physicality and their, and their you know, uh, pursuing to the ball. You know, when you, when you, when you blow the whistle at, at the end of the play, their, their hats are in the, in the picture, you know, and that's how you do it. You know, we're not perfect as coaches, they're not perfect as players, but they're always in the right spot when the whistle blows. Having a professional boxer on your team. Yeah. Normally, you need the physicality, especially from that linebacker unit right in the middle. Something breaks down, they're the ones to stop that big play. Yeah. When you have a boxer out there, yeah. I would say that that's a little bit of an advantage for you. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, when people come to play us, and we have, we have a good four linebacker crew, but inside, you know, they're not the biggest linebackers in the league, but, you know, in my opinion, they're probably the best. You know, from what I saw from them last year and what I'm anticipating about this year, that they're second to none. Bryce, I asked Jake about this. Least favorite place to play? I'd have to go with CNS, honestly. I'm just not a, okay. it's a rivalry, so obviously I, I get along with some of the kids on the team, so it's not like I hate them or anything, but, you know, we've just been rivals with them for a long time now, and for the past couple of years they've gotten the best of us. So we're looking forward to this year and coming out and hopefully uh, proving them wrong and winning the game. Are they the big bad wolf, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I'd say so for the past couple of years, but I feel like we're, uh, we're better than we've ever been this year, and uh, we're going to give them the best run they've ever, they've ever had. So, Why are you the best that you've been this year? What are you seeing? It's just the group of kids we have. It's really, like, we're all tight on and off the field. And uh, I'd say that just the experience we have and the kids on the team are just, just great kids, really. And it's, it's not even just about football. It's just they all want to get better, and they show it in practice. I know yesterday probably wasn't the best day, but uh, we picked it up today a little bit, so... We're what happened? What happened yesterday? <laughs> I feel like I should have been at practice yesterday. It was, it was just the first bad day. You know, little, you know, they were they were just dragging butt. They were tired. You know, yeah. we've been pushing them pretty hard, and I think Did they all want to go to the fair and get like you know a that, pizza that, freed or something. Yeah, what was going on? Might have something to do with it too, but uh, it wasn't as bad as we're making it out to be. <laughs> okay. But the big thing is we don't want to have a, a lot of Wednesdays, a lot of those bad Wednesdays. But yeah. I, you know. I wouldn't grade it as an F. I would say a C minus, but our expectations are higher than a C minus. 
What didn't go right? Tell me what a bad practice looks like, Bryce. It was just a bad Wednesday, really. I mean, like Coach said, it was just we had, what was it, two practices before then or like yeah. two, two days before then, so everybody was tired, probably stayed out a little late the night before because the fair just opened or I don't know. It was just a sloppy day. but Sloppy day. I guess we have those sometimes. Yeah. Expectations, something that we hear a lot about. Bryce is talking about the level that he sees his team at. Coach, speak with me on raising the level of expectation every single year, sure. what you demand, what's, what's that status quo that you want, what, what is that level that you want this team to be at? Because every coach, obviously you want to win, yeah. but there's a way that you describe it, there's different coaches want different things or they focus on different things. Yeah, I, I think the whole thing is playing at your potential. You know, gotta play at the level that you're capable of playing. If not, it, it is a failure, you know? I mean, when, when you, we expect to be better than we were last year, because we have a lot of kids back, and they, they had a great work ethic, work ethic during the off season, but, you know, losing a game that you should've won is the worst feeling in the world. And, you know, last year we, we played Corcoran, who was definitely favored to us, and we, and we beat them, and uh, because we played to our potential. And that's what we have to do each and every week. You know, and, and, and I, I have high expectations of these guys. Bryce, tell me some words to describe Coach Mancuso. Uh, well, I guess I came from CBA, actually, 7th and 8th grade. So he took me in just like one of, one of, my own, one of their own. And uh, he's always been with me from the start. And he trusted me. He gave me a starting position in 10th grade, even though maybe I wasn't the best player out there. And uh, just been a great coach, really has. And he's, along with the fighting thing, he's been great with fighting. Uh, I had a bunch of my football players actually show up in my last fight. So it was awesome to have them there. And he's just been really supporting and uh, the best coach that, honestly, I've really ever had in football. Response? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I did not start him over anybody that was better than him. He earned that spot. That's not the way I roll. But, but Bryce is a special kid. And when he came in, you know, with that smile and that positive attitude, working hard, you know, there, there's no way kids like that don't get on the field. And he, it's been him. I think I was just always maybe what he wanted. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know about other scenarios and stuff like that, but... You know, I, I, I welcomed him and uh, it brought him to the team. The team embraced him, and it's, it all took care of itself after that. What made you, uh, what was it about him that you saw? Like you said, you took him over from CBA. What, what was it? What's, what was so special about it? What made him kind of rise up the ranks? He, he saw it the first day of practice. He was 110% till the very last time, you know, or the very last second of that practice, he was... 100% business, he wasn't screwing around, you know, and, and you know, you don't get kids like that every day, you know, and, and that's what makes him special. And obviously he's gifted, you know, so you got a kid who's a really good kid, he doesn't shoot his mouth off and he gives you 110%, you know, you know that's, that's all he need to win the championship. Do you get nervous as the coach of this football team when he's out fighting? Yeah, <laughs> yes, and I'm sure his dad gets, you know, his family gets nervous when he's out there in the football field, you know. Um, but, you know, I never, ever said, geez, I wish he'd stop boxing, you know. And I didn't go to his past match because we were in another state at the time, but we watched it live on TV, and I was at a fight a year ago, and I love seeing him what he's, you know, he's gifted at that. He's gifted in football, but to see somebody who's gifted in football do something in, in a totally different aspect was was outstanding and, and i supported 100 percent. do you ever get a little bit freaked out about the fact that if you get hurt here you can't play here or if you get hurt here you can't go out and box i mean does that ever go through your mind uh mostly with with football i'd say because i'm only 18 now so with fighting i have my whole entire life to fight but really when it comes down to fights like i just had a fight uh what was it like a month ago about so when it came down to that fight, I was just like, please, just praying I don't get injured because this, is, this could be my last football season. So I definitely didn't want to miss out on that. Fair enough. It is time to go to rapid fire. Bryce, you've had some time to think about your questions. It's three and three again. So I'm going to start with you, Bryce. And I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to let you ask me first, and then I'll go second. Got it. Okay. Uh, if you could live any place in the world, 
Don't be biased. But if you could live any place in the world, where would it be? Oh, did you already say that? He said if I could visit. Okay. He said if I could visit. Visit. Oh, okay. He said visit. Okay. Okay. So I'll pick some other places. All right. So I'm a. So Florida is the second hub of my show because we cover UCF, USF, Miami, uh, Florida State. Jaguar is my 11th year that I'm credentialed. I fly down there for all their home games, and if they make the playoffs, I go through those too. So I've lived in Florida for a couple of years, and I, would say, I was just in Florida twice in two weeks. So I would say Florida or Toronto because I've been a Raptors fan the entire time, so that championship is mine. So I waited 24 years for that championship. So I would say I live in Toronto, I live in Florida, or I would consider maybe one of the Carolinas because I like going down there too. And covering the ACC, you get to do a lot of work down there. Well, my question was going to be, what's your favorite NFL football team? But I assume it's the Jags. It is the Jaguars. Okay, so it's my only team that hasn't won a championship yet. That's all right. It'll happen. So, yeah, I hope so at hey, some point. Hey, a good coach. Um, if you could have any car in the world, what would it be? Any car in the world. Yeah. Jake asked that. Any car? <laughs> yeah. Did you ask Same question. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> All right. Uh, Coach all right. wasn't even listening up here. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was thinking of the question I was going to ask. That's fine. Okay. Okay. There's going to be a pop quiz after this. I hope you're ready. I'm not ready. If um, if you could pick only one of two condiments, would it be ketchup or mustard? Oh, God. I would say mustard. It's got to be mustard. Because if it's a hot dog or a coony, and yes, I call them coonies and not conies or snappies or whatever the heck, I would put mustard on it every time. Very so good. I'm to say that. Coach, I'm going to go to you for this one. All right. What is the one food that you would dread if you, could, if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life and this food was the only one on the menu, you'd rather starve? What is it? It could be anything. Like, I hate cooked carrots. Okay, and so does my mom. I hate my mom cooked hates cooking. She I got sick them. on them years I ago. I them. I would die. Okay. All right. Cooked carrots. Yep. I have a different answer to that. All right. Bryce, I want to stay with that question. What's the one food that you, that you would never touch if it was the last food on earth? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, so I don't even consider my answer I to eat, be food. Yeah, I eat everything. So I'm like a, I'm like a garbage can. So There's got to be something you don't that's like. That's tough. But, uh, oh, I'd say like manja. Manja's like this Macedonian thing. Yeah. My girlfriend had me try it. It's like, oh, okay. so bad. So I, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to you take your word it. for it. All right. What's your second question for me? Uh, what's the best ice cream place in That's this area? So easy. So easy. You got to drive a little bit. Depending on the answer, it could be but easy. You got to drive a little bit, but we've worked together for 10 years. And before we worked together, there was one of these cakes in my house for every event. It's Carvel. So, and I have my own ice Carvel DeWitt. You got to go to yeah. DeWitt. I have my own ice cream there, and we're changing it. I think we're going to do a peanut butter and jelly uh, shake, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy. It's going to be pretty cool. But Car- there's nothing like Carvel at all by any stretch of the imagination. All right, Coach, go ahead. All right, if you're in a triathlon, you had to do a triathlon, what would be your least favorite event? Oh, my God. Uh-huh. <laughs> How would you rank yours? And then let, and then let me think. I want to hear what you would say. What, what I, I, the least favorite would be the swim. Okay. Um, then it would be the bike and run first. Okay. Run would be your favorite. Run. Okay. So that's fair. So I know someone who, who does triathlons, and Tammy, I hope you'll be doing one very soon. So, because she's fighting a good fight right now, and I hope that she gets back to it. I would say, who do you say is my least favorite? Yeah, least favorite. Run. Run? Because I love to bike, and I can, I'm like, I must have, like, grew up in Atlantis or something as okay. a child right. because I could swim all day swim, long. Huh? I just don't like running. Okay. If you want me to run, so you got to give me a we're basketball. The exact opposite. Yes. Okay. We are. That works. Yeah. So, see, we complement each other. I could sure. be on the team. Sure. So, all right, Coach. If you could be any superhero, who would you be and why? Superhero. Ah, definitely Superman. Why? Is he super? Okay, simple as that. I got to meet hey, hey, my can, Superman, who's Dean Kane. And he can Kane. fly. And he can fly. I told you, I like to fly. Yeah. I got to meet Dean Kane. Nice guy. All right. All right. Hey, Bryce, I got to give you my second one here. See it. What's the one song that my your parents could play it, your girlfriend could play it, somebody plays it, and it drives you 
nuts. You cannot listen to the song. Mine is Girls Just Want to Have Fun. If you turn that song on, I will jump out of a moving vehicle. So what is yours? I'd have to go with my type, honestly, just because <laughs> we've been, they laugh, but we've been singing it all the time in practice, and it's, it's getting pretty annoying. Okay. Really. All right. What's your final question for me, Bryce? Uh, man. If, if you could be any animal, what would you be? If I could be any animal, what would I be? I'd be a jaguar because they're lethal and they're fast. And they have to do with, like, I learned about there's certain animals that affect, like, ecosystems. And they're one of the animals that can affect a lot of stuff. So you can learn a lot from them. So I'd say a jaguar or a dog because I've gotten, I've had dogs my whole life. And my dog's my kid, Lily. And she acts like a, she acts like a human being. So, yeah, she's, she would have to, I'd have to be a dog. Because she's got a pretty good life, I would like to think. She has to do what she wants. I feel like if there is reincarnation, it's dog. Like you come back as a dog, you know I you were a good person. Yeah. Like if you come back as a cat, you were okay. <laughs> you come back as a as an ant, you're gonna die like immediately. So you're a horrible person. You're like Charles Manson or something like that. But if you're a dog, that means you're like one of the best ones that are out there. Yeah. All right, coach, what do you got? All right, if you were coming out for the, let's say we let you come out for the Liverpool football team, okay. and I said you could start at any position you want. What would you want to be? Oh, what position? There's two. Two? I there's, said one. I know. You so I'll give you my one and I'll give you my, my, one, my one A and my one B. Fair enough. I'm sorry, brother. I come out for quarterback. And then the second one would be running back. All right. Running back for sure. I'm scrappy. Okay. I'm very scrappy. All right. I'll take your word for it. I am. Listen, I like playing. But, yeah, quarterback, running back. But running back would... There's something special about that. I mean, my favorite players of all time, the majority of them are running backs. Yeah. All right, Coach. If you played right now on the team, what position would you want to be? Ha! Uh, yeah, I'd probably, you know, I, I played uh, defensive back in college. Okay. And I love being a running back, you know, and uh, I love being an inside backer. Yeah. But, you know, being a, 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 we called it a strong safety, which is a version of an outside linebacker. That's the place to be. Okay. That's Bye. the place to be. You know what? I, I think when the ball comes your way, it's the most, most physical place, one on one in open space. And, uh, you know, I miss those days. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right, Bryce. If you, I gotta, I gotta come up with something crazy here. Yeah, I'm gonna build, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go deep with this one. Okay, we're gonna go deep. You're the president of the United States. Okay. You go into office, and you have the power to do anything. What is the first thing that you do? Man, social studies really isn't my uh, cup of tea. So this is a tough question, right? And you can here, do anything in the world. Uh, if you were president, you're sitting in, you're sitting at the desk in the Oval Office, and they say, Mr. President. Have at it. What's the first thing you do? Jeez, this is a tough one. This really is. I got to think about this one. Uh, make Liverpool, New York, the capital of the world. <laughs> capital of America, yeah. All right, Obviously. fair enough. I don't know why it took you so long to yeah, come up with that. <laughs> it's common <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> Get some money in our community, do some stuff. That'd be great. We could do that, right? Because if we're the capital of the world, then obviously they got to bring stuff in here for us. Yeah. So I'm good with that. <laughs> Okay, we'll put, put a Disney, Disney park here, something like that. Okay, fair enough. We'll have to put it in a dome since it snows half the year. <laughs> It'll be good. So, Bryce Mills, you are off the hot seat, my good sir. Coach Thank Mancuso, you. you're off for a second. All right. We're coming back with Max and Coach right after this. So if you're on Facebook Live, stay with us. If you're here at Home Team Pub, we'll be back in just a moment. Give them a round of applause, too. Bryce deserves some love from you. And we'll talk with you soon. Thank you. Thank you.